Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. If you think the Mises Institute supports your views in the public dialogue, then I hope you will consider supporting the Mises Institute. Go to mises.org. We are currently raising money to get 100,000 copies of Rothbard's What Has Government Done to Our Money? into people's hands and you can help. This week's episode is about the commercial real estate market. Austrian economists have been attuned to the problem of commercial real estate in the context of the business cycle. The decreasing demand from tenants, the lowering leasing rates, combined with rising interest rates and lower commercial real estate values, putting this sector in a real pinch. Most commentary that I've heard tells me not to worry, that some of the subsectors are doing okay, and that lenders and investors are well diversified. Lenders are willing to accommodate the problems that borrowers are having, not to worry. Well, at least I hope so. The sector is comprised of office buildings, retail buildings, multifamily apartment buildings, as well as industrial, hotels, warehousing, and healthcare facilities. Real estate mortgages are typically for 80% of the value of the property, with the owner putting up 20% of the investment. Instead of the crazy 30-year mortgages homeowners have access to, commercial mortgages have shorter maturities of five to seven years, with a balloon payment at the end. This is when new mortgages have to be paid off or refinanced with the lender. The sector has nearly $5 trillion in mortgages attached to it, of which $2 trillion comes due between 2024 and 2026. Now, banks only hold the biggest chunk of that money at around 38%, and they have also recently tightened their lending standards. However, it is worth noting that banks as a whole have rarely resorted to such tightening outside of an official recession. We also must remember that such banks are already treading in difficult waters caused by the Fed's tsunami monetary policy. These changes by banks have reduced the flow of new funds and new loans, refinancing, and some banks have sold off or reduced portfolios of such loans, probably necessary and prudent moves. The mounting difficulties have also resulted in an increase in the flexibility of renegotiation between current borrowers and current mortgage holders, the banks and other financing companies. Under normal conditions, the owner-borrower would be free to renegotiate the best deal from any lender, and the existing mortgage holder, banks, could get their capital back and be free to recirculate it in other types of loans. It seems that more of these mortgage contracts involve borrowers with few alternative lenders and existing lenders with no easy exit and the need to keep the borrower going. Hence, renegotiation, something that has also been urged upon them by various bank regulators in order to prevent foreclosure and forced sales, which in turn would put further downward pressure on banks and real estate markets. This is the systemic problem of Fed interest rate policy. According to Morgan Stanley Capital International, Only 5% of U.S. banks' commercial mortgages were considered, quote, distressed at the end of 2023, and the share of distressed office space mortgages were actually beginning to decrease relative to other subsectors. I'm not sure if this is a good thing or if the problem is merely spreading to other subsectors. However, the real aspects of the market taken as a whole are deteriorating in terms of tenants and lease rates. The financing aspect of higher interest rates and restricted financing are also deteriorating. Hence, the refinancing stage is a real powder keg. Therefore, we have the increase in, quote, repayment flexibility and, quote, loan modifications. 
the payoff rate was less than 40% in 2023. This is where the borrower can find an alternative lender and the original lender gets paid off and can redeploy their capital to better uses. The payoff rate is actually up and the modification rate is actually down so far in the first two months of 2024, both of those representing improvements, but defaults on those mortgages are also up significantly. Calvin Tells reports that there are also more than $200 billion of such mortgages that are either in forbearance plans, late with their payments, or were at risk for not having the required leased up space in their buildings. That last problem could easily worsen if leasing continues to be problematic, which it certainly will when and if a recession becomes official. Commercial real estate looks like a future casualty of the Fed's ultra-low interest rate, tsunami monetary and interest rate policy that began after the great financial crisis and continued through its massive COVID response, where they drove interest rates down to zero. The significance and severity of this victim will also have negative consequences on our vital small and regional banks. This would in turn have negative and disruptive impacts on the financing of productive activities and jobs in our economy. 